Hello and welcome to the February edition of Spotlight Tampa. I'm Steve Overton. Thanks for joining us today. First in the spotlight, thousands of us line the streets in East Tampa during the 27th annual Martin Luther King Day Parade. The parade grows bigger and better each year and celebrates the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a leader, activist, and humanitarian who spread the message of nonviolence to eliminate racial inequality during the Civil Rights Movement. This is the 27th anniversary of the Martin Luther King Parade, and we're very, very excited about it. Uh, the parade started at a walk. It became a symbolic walk from uh, City Hall down to the county courthouse. It was a very small uh, route that we had, and then it moved over to East Tampa because of construction. And since we moved it over into East Tampa, we've added a mile to the parade, and it has just continued to grow and grow and grow and get a lot bigger. As it has grown, we've gotten more popular, and everybody's just come out as a festival time, and it's all in rem remembrance of Dr. King. And when I talk about Dr. King, I think about the fact that he laid down his life so that we could have equality. And I felt that if he could do that, then surely I could give him one day to come out and commemorate his dream of nonviolence and unselfishness and, of course, service. And there's power in nonviolence. And so that we, when we have problems in our community that are based on violence, we need to be reminded that Dr. King changed the whole country with a philosophy that was based in nonviolence. The other thing we want people to do, particularly young people, is just learn to get outside yourselves and understand that there's something bigger than, than who you are. Uh, there's a community. There's all the things that Dr. King dreamed about. And we're very, very pleased that in our parade, we feel like it shows the diversity and the strength of, of the whole Tampa Bay area. Uh, you know, all, all, all races, all colors, and it's family friendly. And so that again was what Dr. King, you know, gave his life for. Day. This is uh, an opportunity to celebrate the amazing legacy of Dr. King, an opportunity to come out and celebrate what a great and diverse community this is, but most importantly, it's a reminder that the work's really not done. With the MLK Day Parade's growing success, the Foundation is proud to donate scholarship money in support of the Martin Luther King Memorial Scholarship Fund run by City of Tampa and Hillsborough County employees. These scholarships are awarded to high school students who will become the next generation of great leaders. Recently, 15 new firefighters started their careers with Tampa Fire Rescue. Our cameras followed them through an intensive six-week training regimen. Let's take a look.
training never stops for Tampa's bravest. The best firefighters learn new specialties and techniques throughout their entire career. USF Health has a new program that is helping veterans transition back to civilian life with the opportunity of starting a new profession. It's called V-Care, and it's quickly becoming a nationally leading program. The Veteran to Bachelor of Science in Nursing program was created specifically for military medic and corpsmen whose education and experience have them operating within the military at a higher role. However, when these individuals leave the service, they're not able to transition to civilian life in a role that is analogous to that. So the Military Medic and Corpsman builds upon the education experience that these individuals have in the military and transitions them to a role as a registered professional nurse. This provides them a professional career that allows them an autonomous role within the healthcare team. So I was a medic and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity other than being a medic in the civilian sector. Um, not a whole lot of my experience translated well to the civilian sector, so I started exploring different opportunities and I uh, found the College of Nursing at USF and I was looking through the website, looking through the information and I found uh, out about the V-Care program and it was uh, it's an excellent fit. It's an excellent opportunity. I mean, it's really surpassed any other opportunities, any other programs I could find, so I had to jump into the opportunity. So before I even uh, came into the program, the first thing that USF was able to do is award credit for the experience I had. So some of the um, healthcare training that I had in the military were able to get credit for that. Um, and then once we got here, the program's really been tailored to uh, our experience. So instead of starting out from square one as if we didn't have any experience, they really take the experience into consideration that we've had and they build on it and they tell you that the curriculum's been tailored to that experience. So it's a much quicker program. We'll be able to complete this entire program in 16 months from start to finish. So it really accelerates our uh, pathway to become a professional nurse in the civilian. So if you're considering a career in the healthcare field and uh, you've been in the military, I would definitely look into the program and apply. The University of South Florida College of Nursing is invested in improving the lives of military and veterans. It is our duty. These individuals have put their lives on the line for our safety. We owe something to them when they come back. In addition, we've got this highly qualified pool of medics and corpsmen. We have a shortage in nursing. As I look at it, it truly is a perfect match or a perfect pairing because we get individuals who understand dedication, they understand service, they understand expert care. In the hospitals where they've been for their clinical, um, we get requests for, we wanna hire all of them, and by the way, do you have any more? The University of South Florida College of Nursing is the number one nursing program for military and veterans in the country. Coming to USF provides you not only the best educational experience because you have a program that is uniquely tailored to your background, a faculty who's a committed and engaged, in-state tuition, but also the financial and student academic supports to assure your success. You can't go wrong. USF is ranked the number one most veteran-friendly school in the Southeast and number five most veteran-friendly school nationally by Military Times Edge in 2014. Cyclists and pedestrians recently had an opportunity to receive vital safety tips and information during the Tampa Police Department's first annual Winter Safety Land event. Spotlight Tampa was there. Let's take a look.
This is an exciting event. We planned for it a month in advance. We got all our squads together from the districts and they all donated money so we could buy bikes just for this event. And the event is for us and the community to get together for education, for uh, bike safety education and going over the rules about helmet and safety. And on top of that, we're mingling and we're really enjoying one another's company. I really enjoy coming out here with my grandkids and it was so wonderful. The police officers, they were so great. They helped the kids learn about the bikes and learn about safety. And this was the most experienced, uh, most enjoyable time that I had with the kids learning their learning experience. We have here a bike registration program and we're trying to reduce bike thefts by using our bike registration program. It'll be help us recover your bike if it were to be stolen. And you can access that through tampagov.net forward slash police and you can register your bike, put in the serial number and your name, and if it gets stolen and we recover it, we'll be able to return it to you. Bike thefts are, are on a rise from the summer till now, and we're trying to combat that, and that's just one way to do that. She won the prize for the bicycle, and she's so excited. She just, oh my gosh, she just had tears in her eyes because she didn't have a bicycle, and she didn't get much for Christmas. But I just thank uh, God that she has everything she wants. She's so excited. And she said, Grandmother, could I ride my bicycle now to just keep it hold down? I'm, I'm excited myself. It's great. It's this entire department got together in this district to make that happen. And we got 26 bikes with bike locks, with lights, and with helmets to give out and ride. I like the bike rodeo because the kids actually learn how to control the bikes in a safe maneuver and how to ride them where they won't get hurt by traffic. I mean, it was so wonderful. I enjoyed it. And it, the, the main thing about it is that the, the police officers and the help and the news camera, they were so wonderful. And it, it's, it's just something that I would never, and the kids said they would never forget. The purpose of the event was to encourage those who received new bicycles for Christmas to come out and register them with the Tampa Police Department. Tampa, just like every other city in Florida, is comprised of neighborhoods. But here, every community reflects something good about the people who live within it. As we're about to discover, portraying the unique character of a neighborhood can be a colossal job, both figuratively and literally. Back in 2014, when the Florida Department of Transportation was completing construction on an elevated toll road that would connect the Leroy Selman Expressway to Interstate 4 in Tampa. There was lots of buzz about container trucks and big rigs gaining direct access to Port Tampa Bay, one of Florida's largest seaports. But while the wheels of progress were turning, some were beginning to wonder if they had been overlooked. Well, I hope they felt a little bit of responsibility to make it look like something other than a giant brick wall or block wall. The waterside hamlet of Palmetto Beach is nestled between the expressway, the port, and McKay Bay. So as FDOT began to erect the new transportation corridor, the residents of Palmetto Beach thought their neighborhood's identity would be lost in the rising tide of transportation needs. The road is really right on in the neighborhood. Um, the connector, uh, they took out some of the houses for the neighborhood. Uh, not a lot, but, uh, you know, I think two on each, uh, on the end, north end of the neighborhood, for the length of the connector. So it's, it's literally right on us. Before long, residents were discussing the corridor's impact with FDOT administrators. Thank you. Thank you. Out of their conversations grew a partnership with the City of Tampa's Art Programs Division and a pretty good idea. As part of the urban design guidelines, we had an opportunity to actually add art in this project. What we've chosen and worked with the local community on was the cargo panel walls, as you can see. What these represent is the door view of a Connex box that you frequently see stacked up at the ports. The residents of Palmetto Beach thought that the cargo panels were a nice touch to the corridor's off-ramp. But that's not all. Rob and I with the Art Programs Division, working with the people in the neighborhood, commissioned artist Stephen Hafer to design a mural that would be placed over a portion of the off-ramp's cargo paneling. 
Hayford has a very unique way of approaching his projects. Anytime I start something like this that's reflective of a community, I start with driving through, looking at the architecture, uh, looking at how people interact with each other uh, on the street, vegetation, everything. Hayford used his research to literally recreate Palmetto Beach, only smaller. I think one of my favorites was the man waving from the porch. Hayford specializes in miniatures. For years, he has collected and designed plastic people, animals, and anything else necessary to complete his dioramas. Staging depictions of Palmetto Beach was a task he thoroughly enjoyed. There was a great diversity in the people uh, that we observed as we were going through the neighborhoods. I like to take pieces that represent different parts of the whole, put them all together so people will find something uh, within the whole image that they understand and relate to. Finally, this waterside hamlet had found its champion, and the community had gained new visibility. The artists captured the scale of the, the community. It's the smaller houses. The feel of the of walking down a street, the, the scene within the artwork, uh, there are people walking their dogs, things like that. So he picked up some of the activities that the community members go through day in and day out. This is Frank Crum for Spotlight Tampa. If you're thinking about a new place to call home, think about Palmetto Beach. Besides great public art, the neighborhood offers a variety of housing options, transit service, bicycle paths, and tree-lined streets with sidewalks perfect for enjoying the outdoors. Visit palmettobeach.org to find out more about this diverse waterfront neighborhood. Well, that wraps it up for February's Spotlight Tampa. I'm Steve Overton, and for all of us here at City of Tampa Television, I hope you have a great day.